We've been actually modeling projects for customers throughout the world for, for about 30 years now. And um, you know, through that process, we've, we've learned a lot, of, uh, a lot of things through the industry, a lot of challenges. And what we try to do is we figure out technology and, and processes and flows and try to bring that to our customers. So some of the things I want to show you today are going to be tied into what we can do for you and how, how some of the uh, issues in, in the industry that we come up with solutions for and hopefully provide those in a, in a meaningful way. Uh, you know, as a VDC group, um, you know, we have 100 plus people globally, so uh, we're not that small of a VDC group. Uh, a lot of companies will have 20, 30, um, but uh, we're, we're over 100 now, and like I say, we're doing pro we do projects globally for engineers and contractors throughout the world, so if they have a BIM requirement on a project, we can come in and uh, help them, help them uh, model the project and create uh, construction deliverables. So just to keep, you know, some of the things we're going to cover, I'm going to skip through that just because we're short on time. Um, so really, I mean, a lot of the people under, use our, our website and our content. Um, so you can see on the left, we support over, like I said, over 20, 20 different software. Um, we have a big initiative right now around EPC projects. So if you are a company that uses AutoCAD Plan 3D, um, Aviva, Intergraph, we have software and uh, content actually for that. Um, and then we support all the other BIM platforms. Uh, a big thing that I do is uh, Victaulic Tools for Revit. So we built an add-in for Revit that allows you to do uh, full fabrication from a Revit model. So uh, we started using Revit back in 2014, and uh, over the years we've been continuing to develop that tool set. And um, actually one of the big things I do is I go around and I help customers implement BIM in their company using our, our products and our software. So uh, we can make it a lot easier for, for companies to, uh, to, to integrate Revit and to use it on projects so you're not getting killed with a Revit deliverable requirement. Um, I've seen a lot of companies use Revit over the years and a lot of them don't optimize it and that's a big thing of what we try to do. Um, just to show we have our AutoCAD details and Revit details available so if you're interested in just not going to a full level BIM, but you still need AutoCAD, 2D, and 3D. We have all those those details available. Uh, if you are interested in going into Revit or into the 3D modeling on CAD, we have all our families and components available. So we put a lot of thought into when we make content. Um, I always joke, you know, the content we've made, we've completely gone through the library two or three times now and completely remade it all because we'll make content and we'll realize that it's crap or it's junk and then we'll go back and remake it and fix it and make it right. So we take a lot of pride in, in our content and the way it works for our customers. And if it doesn't work for you, you gotta let us know. And we do make, uh, we do make constant updates to it. And uh, we have team members that are very in intimate in all the different software and they're able to, uh, to support your needs. Um, when we, we support all our products. So these, this is actually a, an interesting product that we came out with, uh, I guess a year and a half now. Um, it's our vibration isolation pump drop. So instead of modeling up these individual pieces and parts on your equipment connections and your model, all we have is a single product. You can just drop in for the discharge and a single product you can drop in for the suction side. So our 380 and 381. Um, so that's pretty much changed the way we do our, our estimates and our projects and sped up that process a lot because uh, a big thing for us as a manufacturer is we try to standardize our product and provide offerings, but as a contractor or an engineer, you should really be doing that same thing as well. Um, I always work with customers and I tell them, you know, it's like we, every project is unique. Well, it doesn't really need to be. You want to try to look at your projects and modulize and, and simplify them as much as possible to make them uh, the same. So you want to take a look at areas like this is a project that can be the same and you know make those as, as, as modules inside your, your uh, construction uh, strategy. Um, this is a big thing. I, I follow um, JV Knowledge, MCAA. Um, we've seen a huge increase in Revit. You know, so back in 17, 2017, it was 20%. 2018, we saw 40%. 19, they did another survey, a little different results, but they're up around 55%. So we've actually seen it when we were back in using Revit in 2014. Everybody said, oh, that's nice, you know. We're not there yet. 
Um, but now we're actually seeing a, a lot of our customers are there now. And uh, if you're not converted over to Revit or if you're detailing or your uh, planning or, or um, fabrication teams haven't converted over, it's definitely something to consider because uh, we are seeing the trend. And uh, the advantages really are there. If it's properly set up, it, it's a huge advantage for your company. And honestly, the things we're doing today with our company, we wouldn't be able to do it in the material management side as well. Uh, you know, everybody loves a good BIM mandate, right? Um, in the US, has anybody ever had a BIM mandate on a project? Um, maybe a little bit, right? So the last, the current one I've been seeing is Kobe. So we always thought Kobe was like something we never had to worry about. So now that's rearing its head on the, a lot of the government projects. So I don't know if anybody here gets involved in those, but um, we've been working with customers to help meet those Kobe requirements. But uh, we, have, we have projects over in Europe and Middle East and, and Asia and stuff. And you know, it's, there's been mandates everywhere. So you always have to uh, try to meet whatever those requirements are. So it's always a good challenge as well. I always joke, you know, uh, Revit's sort of like Gumby and AutoCAD's more like a, like a rock, right? So AutoCAD, you just place each individual piece and part, and those parts and pieces get placed exactly where you want it. Revit's a complete mind shift in that you just route a system and you move that system around and adjust things. And, um, you know, you're not going in and placing pieces and parts, you're routing systems. You know, another analogy would be anybody remember Mario Brothers, right? <laughs> Um, you remember this one? How many people remember this? I did. <laughs> I remember playing that on Game Boy, right? So, uh, but it wasn't in color yet. But you know, so this is another analogy between CAD. A lot of people out there are still doing 2D CAD. Um, some people are, you know, obviously going into 3D. Doesn't have to be Revit, but uh, you know, typically, you know, Revit's a pretty good, uh, pretty good platform to be on because a lot of, a lot of engineers are using it. So as you migrate the design forward, it does make it a little easier. Um, our Victolic tools for Revit. Um, what I'll do is uh, actually have a, uh, a live demo part. Shit. I'll switch over to Revit. Make sure my time. Um, so we made some new tools, which are pretty cool. So uh, if I go into uh, the spooling view here, just to show you, uh, this is a Revit model. Um, I can come up here and uh, go to um, Auto Assembly. So inside here, I can specify I want a service or system abbreviation, what level and what sequence, sequential number to, to choose, um, what size spool and how many bends in that spool. When I click OK, what it's going to do is it's going to programmatically look at that model and split it down to individual spool drawings, spool pieces. So for us, this is saving a ton of time, right? So if I look at this spool, maybe it's not exactly what I wanted, right? That's a little too big to fit on the truck. I can just come in here and I can split the assembly and I can tell it, hey, I want to make these pieces a different assembly. I click finish and I want to make that assembly two. I click OK. It's going to say, hey, I'm going to renumber a bunch of your assemblies. No problem. Now I have number two in there, right? So that's pretty straightforward. I can come over here. We have a whole list of spools shown. If I want to spool these off and actually create the sheets, uh, I can do that too. I have an option over here to um, select the fabrication template and click go. And now what it's going to do is it's going to create those individual spool sheets for me. So here's my spool sheet, my bill material, everything's tagged, you know, ready to go. So we, we've taken a process that used to take us uh, 20 minutes per spool and knocked it down to, you know, what seconds. And the big thing here for us in the construction side is that if, when we get project changes, the, this model and this spool updates automatically as changes come through. So that was, that was, that's real nice, right? The challenge there is, is well, we're, not, we're beyond spooling. We want to get into modularization of the project. We want to create skids. We want to create um, you know, pump skids, chiller skids. We want, to prefab, we want to prefabricate and ship the whole mechanical room instead of just you know, sending out pipe and fittings. So what we did is, um, to help our customers out, um, we created a tool. I'll just switch over there. I can actually create a system ISO or let's say a fab or a skid. I can come in here under actions. I can um, create a package. And I'm just going to call this a skid. And I'm just going to put it, I'll just put it, categorize it under skids. Okay. 
Now what that did is if I go into package manager, I see now this new package called the skid, and I can go and do that same thing and, and create the views and sheets off of that. So now what we're doing inside Revit for the first time, and I gotta open up this view. Um, I can actually create like my system ISOs or my, 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 uh, you know, my skids or my modules and break up the project more than just spools. So in the past, we didn't have the ability to do that. Simple thing, you'd think, right? But Revit didn't have the ability to do that. Yeah, so here's some of the projects we've, we've done uh, in that process for our customers. So these are different racks and skids that we've worked on or we, we uh, worked on, worked with the uh, contractor to, uh, to, to uh, lay out and, and uh, pre-modulize. So you can see here's a couple different things. Um, here's another set of areas we've seen a lot. You know, this obviously this concept's been going along, been uh, going a long time, been going on a long time on the plumbing side, right? Um, you know, and this is just basically how we do it for on the Victolic side. Uh, another thing that we've worked on is really integrating our systems in with the actual cutting software and the, the uh, all tiger stops we've actually integrated with GP, GTP Stratus um, so inside our model it's easy enough to update things it's actually so easy you don't even realize things updated challenge is you don't know that things are out of date so we went in and we built some functionality inside the software to track when things are out of date so now if there is a change and something comes comes across that we need to go back and fix something at least when that sheet goes out to the fab shop to do the the deep, the you know, cutting and fitting the pipe, they know, hey, this is there's something up here. We need to go find out what's going on. And this is really what ties into uh, GTP Stratus. I don't know if anybody here knows what Stratus is. That's a another company. Oh yeah, we know what Stratus is. Yeah, so Stratus, uh, we've been integrating with Stratus to um, you know to basically make the statuses within our project within our assembly manager automatically come into Stratus. So what's great for the, us on the, on the modeling team is we know where the, where the shop is, we know where the field is. So what happens when there's a problem out in the field and something doesn't fit? The, the detailers are the one that really have all the answers that can answer the question on what to do and how to fix the fab. So if you have all the information in the model, I can, instead of spending three days on a problem, I can spend a few minutes understanding where the issue is. And how to address it, right? Um, it's amazing. Check if you have if you're on the construction side. Ask your team how long it takes to figure out when there's a problem, and how long it takes to fix that problem. You might be really surprised because I never thought it would take three days, but it doesn't. I've seen it. Um, just a matter of finding out what material is, changing material, changing drawings, changing spools, catching spools. Um, so this is a really great tool, and it links the fab shop to the, the modeling modeling uh, team. So between our tool and uh, Stratus, that, that's been a good, good, uh, good link. Just about done with time here, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about you know some of the things we're working on, some of our future steps. Uh, we're working on a lot of different software tools and functionality, uh, additional for our toolbar. We take actually a lot of product, proud and what, or a lot of pride in, in what we did and what we built. So if there's tools and things you're looking for in the software, let us know because. Uh, we're always adding new functionality to it and uh, really it's for us it's about a partnership um, being able to uh, to help you out and um, you know make your project a lot easier try to avoid stress and, and challenges um, i'd like to also say too we have a great booth it's on at, at uh, 3061 check us out we have a big sign if you go in the middle of the hall um, down that aisle you'll see a victolic sign if you look one way or the other Pretty big so uh, but booth uh, 3061 if you want to reach out to me or if you have any questions or things you'd like to